Okay, well, last but certainly not least, uh, we have one final presentation. We're gonna go back to the topic of insect control. And uh, we're, I would like to invite Dr. David Signa from Vestergaard in Switzerland to uh, come up and he's gonna talk about uh, a novel tool called zero fly storage bags. Thank you, everyone. Uh, maybe, since it's also the last presentation, may I, may I dare to ask the technician to leave the, to not dim the lights that we prevent uh, snoring and yawning? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Uh, so, my name is David Essin, and I'm going to present for you um, the um, few information and results from a um, few field studies that we have done uh, on the zero fly storage bag, which is actually a new tool in the market that uh, contribute to control insect infestation, hence preventing post-harvest loss in, uh, uh, post -harvest losses in grains. A uh, few words about Vestergaard. Uh, Vestergaard is a family company founded in 57, initially worked uh, in um, manufacturing uniforms and uh, still on the textile industry, but um, with a totally new look, and after the third generation now is a global company that produces innovating tools for, uh, that provide solution for a better, healthier world and uh, for a more food secure population living in this planet. Um, Bessergaard operates in four continents, several countries, and the works operating under a humanitarian business, entrepreneurship business model, meaning that actually we try to focus on um, doing business while helping people. So uh, doing good while doing business as well. And we try to target vulnerable groups and to make sure that our products support, uh, impact on improving life of vulnerable people. Um, we have three main range of products. One is uh, the quite known permanent that made Vestergaard famous around the world. Um, is we are the biggest producer of mosquito net in the world. Um, the, recently, we introduced a new range of product called a live straw that also um, is an innovative system of um, water purifiers um, that help to prevent uh, diarrheal diseases. And the last one is the one that I'm talking right now, and is the zero fry range of products, which are mainly three products. Uh, the, the first is uh, target and traps that are to uh, uh, control and measure the, infest the attack of tsetse flies and biting flies, and um, livestock screens that prevent insect infestation uh, uh, for livestock, and the zero fly bag. So the zero fly bag is the first available insecticide incorporated bag uh, that help to prevent uh, post-harvest losses due to insect infestation. So how does it work? It's a normal bag, look exactly like norm other bags, uh, a part of our brand on the top, and uh, it has two, uh, it has incorporated in the fabric, Delta Metrine, which is a pyrethroid approved by WHO, um, that has a slow and controlled release uh, and, and is incorporated in the polymer of the fabric, in the polymer yarns. Hence, allow a very slow and controlled release of the insecticide, which has proven to be very effective for insects and very safe for humans at the same time. So, kill insects and, uh, and doesn't contaminate the food that is in the bags. Um, main features of this product is the first one is the first pyrethroid insecticide incorporated into polymers, uh, used for uh, food security application and for post harvest loss reduction. Uh, proposes is a result of a recipe uh, developed uh, with more than 10 years of research, research and development. Um, it has uh, a good range of features. First of all, as a, a chemical and uh, physical uh, safety, meaning it is non-toxic in terms of heavy metals and other chemical parameters, and it is also safely safe physically, meaning it has an anti-slip wave, which is very important, it's some, something minimal, but I can tell you I witnessed it, actually experienced myself, the impact of a bag falling from a stack on your bag, 
while sampling uh, the bags. So it's not a detail when these bags are slipping from a stack of 32 bags high or five meters high on when people are and people are working in the warehouse. Um, and it's a common problem of most bags. Uh, it has a proven physical durability of minimum of two years, and it, the, the chemical, the ductile principle has two years uh, lifespan, so it, it released the delta metrin for maximum of two years. Uh, has been proven in the laboratory to be effective against the main target pests. I will go into the details later. And uh, we have also tested it in 11 countries for feed trials to check the, the efficacy in normal rural condition as well. And lastly, but absolutely not least, is what I was mentioning that is safe for the products that are stored in the bags are safe for human consumption. Uh, we are talking about a product that store food that is destined for human consumption mainly. And as you can see in this graph, we tested it in four countries with different commodities against three, the three strictest uh, food safety standards. And uh, the lines below show the residual levels uh, which are all under the strictest standard in the world, which is surprisingly the Indian standard of the Indian Bureau of Indian Standards. So the product is safe for human consumption. So lab test. You can see in this star all the major pests that are killed by the bag. So practically in the lab, the product proved to be eff efficient with a 100% mortality knockdown effect after exposure to the product, to the bag. So, and none of the insects were able to chew through the bag. So that, that's a key point because in a warehouse where you have bags that maybe are not zero fly and other bags that are zero fly, insects cannot pass from one to another. They're not able to penetrate the bag because they are killed before. Meaning that if there are no insects in the bag, no insect can go inside. I'll go uh, into details later on. So after the lab test, we also checked in the field what's going on and how this product is, works. As I, I can't go into details right now, so I won't enter into the details of all the 11 trials in the countries, but let me explain to you a bit what we did in these three countries. In Senegal, with the Department of Plant Protection, we tested the bag for three months, uh, comparing it with the locally procured uh, polypropylene bags. And uh, the bag proved to be effective against four major pests with four for four different commodities. Arrakis, cowpeas, maize, and millet. In Ethiopia, we went a bit farther and we also compared the use of the bag against two other current farmer practice, which is the current, the normal untreated bag plus fumigated with an aluminum phosphide and the polypropylene bag are associated with a treatment with malathion at 5%, mixed with the grains. Well, the result in the table show that in terms of insect control, the zero flight bag was performing better, if not equivalent to the other two chemicals, and of course better than the untreated bags. And uh, in terms of dead insect, as well in terms of damage, percentage of damage kernels, and was performing best in terms of germination, meaning that uh, despite two years contact with the bag, the germinability of the grains is still good. Actually, it's even higher than the untreated bags, surprisingly. In Zambia, we tested it, and we are currently testing it further. Uh, the product, comparing it with locally procured untreated bags as well, with or without a normal practice of uh, phenytorion at 1% and delta metrine for two years. Uh, we are now testing it actually in 12 warehouses in two different agroecological zones, small and big warehouses, to also check if the results are the same in different agroecological zones and in different weather conditions as well and rural and current rural uh, practices. And you can see that in the tables, 
in terms of insect infestation and grain damage, you actually can't see. You can't see the zero fly bags because the, the columns are at zero, so uh, you, you don't see actually uh, the, the lines, the colored lines, because both in terms of grain damage and insect of in, in terms of insect infestation, the product proved to have zero, 100% efficacy. Conclusions. So, it managed to control all key targets. It managed to work in different agroecological zones, in different gen in geographical areas, and with various commodity, up to two years. Protect from external infestation, and provide an early barrier for insects trying to penetrate the bag. Uh, on the other side is, so what happened? Reduce actually the infect, insect population in the warehouse through the direct contact with the bag. And it can also protect and reduce infestation in larger warehouse as long as, and this is a key point, as long as the maize stored in the bags has been fumigated. So only after prior fumigation. So we are sure that there are no insects inside of the bag to ensure the best product performance. What next? Next, we, the product works. Now we want to scale up this technology. We want to get, we want to get it everywhere. And uh, we want to also further penetrate, uh, especially in Africa, rural remote areas to reach small scale uh, smallholder farmers and small scale producer and uh, small scale uh, traders that store grains in uh, very remote areas in Africa especially. Anything else? Questions for you? And thank you very much for your attention. Sure, if you prefer. Okay, so we have time for questions. There's one here in the front, please. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. It's uh, Brighton Vumi from uh, Zimbabwe. Um, you, you're suggesting that uh, this technology works best with uh, fumigation. Uh, I'm just wondering the appropriateness of uh, that technology um, for smallholder farmers, you know, fumigation and uh, these, these bags, as, uh, these zero fly bags, uh, considering the risks associated with smallholder, I mean, uh, smallholder fumi fumigation, the, the levels of expertise, the access to the fumigants, the training, safety issues, and so forth. Uh, that's question number one. Question number two is, um, from uh, basic theory, we know that um, storage insects, uh, the, particularly the, the, the pyrethroid, it works best on um, uh, the postrichids, but not necessarily on the rest of the insects like uh, Cytophilus. So usually that's why we need to combine uh, pyrethroids and uh, OPs so that um, you can control the whole spectrum of uh, insects. But in this case, we only have a pyrethroid. How do we know that the whole spectrum of insects can be controlled? Thank you very much. Well, let, wait, let's, wait, hang on, let's let him respond to this question first. Hold on one second. Thank you very much. Very two interesting questions. Uh, yeah, you're right that fumigation is a risk and it's complicated for smallholder farmers. And uh, I mentioned in, fa in fact in that it's a best practice for large warehouses where fumigation is normally a current practice and is recommended. Uh, spraying and other kind of treatment that we can accompany and associate to the use of zero fly bags are recommended for smallholder farmers in order to prevent and to avoid the complication related to fumigating small, small warehouses. So there are, there are other kind of practices that we can use to associate it with the zero fly. On the other side, if none of them is applied, the zero fly bag is still contributing to reducing post-harvest losses because it's still helping to prevent external insect infestation. So insect cannot, more insect cannot penetrate the bags and they cannot travel with, between bags. 
So anyway, as you know, when uh, borers start producing flour in the, gra in the grains, all this flour goes in the bottom of the, of the sack for, because of gravity, and they start feeling suffocating, and they try to travel to the lower bag. They won't be able to travel on the lower bag. They will die. So anyway, there will be a part of the bag that will not be infest in, damaged by insect anyway. It won't be, of course, 100%. Uh, efficient as if fumigated or if other means are accompanied. Uh, um, you mentioned about other insects. Well, as I say, it works with major borers, but not with other pests. And for other pests, there are other means of control that are not, and those chemicals are not yet, we have not yet been able to incorporate in the, in the, um, Poly polymer, but this is a working process. It's not, uh, we have not uh, uh, finished our research. The research and development process is still ongoing, and we are trying to develop bags with other uh, active principles as well to try to have a broader spectrum of uh, action. So I hope I answered to your questions. Okay, we have time for one more question. Thank you. <laughs> I guess we'll have to take the gentleman over here. Do we have the microphone? I have one. You have a microphone, okay. No, I have. You have a, a question. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, someone already, I'm sorry, okay. We already have someone who has the microphone. I, we'll go there, go ahead. Okay, my, my name is Willis from uh, Kenya. I've been able to see the, the zero fly bugs and my question is more or less a follow up to the question that was asked before. Uh, you've said that uh, if there is no prior treatment of the grain uh, to, uh, to storage in the bag, the efficiency is not 100%. Have you kind of uh, worked up uh, such that you can tell a smallholder farmer that if you don't do any treatment to the grain, then the efficiency is this much? Is this something that you've already done so that you know the efficiency of the bag for a smallholder farmer uh, situation? You will have these results in a couple of months. We are ending our trial in Zambia exactly for this purpose. And we are testing it in, in 12 warehouses there. I'll go next month, and in two months uh, you, will, you will have the results. Okay, great. So um, we've come to the end of our time. I would like to thank all the speakers for very interesting presentations. Thank you for your questions and attention, and it's time for lunch. <laughs>